Welcome to the Inbound Logistics video podcast series presented by Inbound Logistics Magazine. Today, we're looking at some innovations in the industry that will hopefully move us all towards greener and cleaner pastures. Joining us are Eric Krauss and Daryl Knight of ProTrans International and BJ Johnson of Clear Flame Engine Technologies. Here is our host, Amy Roach. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, welcome again to our guests from ProTrans and Clear Flame. I am excited to chat with you all today. Uh, we're going to talk about some really cool partnership uh, that you put together for some transportation sustainability solutions. Uh, but let's take a minute first and get to know everyone. Uh, Daryl Knight is the Chief Commercial Officer at ProTrans International. Daryl, tell us a little bit about what you do for ProTrans and uh, how long you've worked in the logistics industry. Sure. Thanks, Amy. Um, been in the logistics industry really my entire career. So a little over 20 years, uh, all I've done is logistics. And at ProTrans, uh, in my chief commercial officer role, really two important objectives among you know a lot of things uh, that we do day to day here in, in, in this role. But um, one of the objectives is making sure that we delight our customers and help them achieve their objectives. And in doing that, we're looking to grow our business in a sustainable, profitable manner. And that's really two of the, the primary mandates of, uh, of my role as Chief Commercial Officer. Along with Daryl, we have Eric Krauss, Vice President of Transportation and OEM Operations. Uh, Eric, give us a little background on your role and experience in logistics as well. Hi, Amy. Happy to be here today. Uh, my name is Eric Krauss, Vice President of Transportation and OEM Operations. Um, I lead all of our transportation teams uh, for ProTrans, which include the, the transportation planning group, the expedites group, and the fleet services team. And then I lead our customer facing operations teams for our OEM customers. Um, and we work hand in hand every single day with our facility teams to deliver the transportation products and services that ProTrans has to offer. Fantastic. And Daryl, I'm going to go back to you for a second uh, for our audience members who maybe are not familiar. Tell us a little bit about ProTrans. Uh, what does the company do? What's your mission? Yeah, sure. We specialize in inbound to manufacturing transportation services to, from, and within North America. We've been doing this for 30 years. We've got a team of experts who know inbound to manufacturing customers mm -hmm. and cross-border transportation mm -hmm. services. The core service offering is what we call consolidation. And that's about optimizing cross-border transportation so that the right part arrives in the right place, at the right time, damage-free, and at the lowest possible cost. And the way we make this happen is through uh, a combination of things. Our road, over-the-road transportation services in North America, and our air and sea uh, services from Asia and Europe leveraging our 30 facilities that we have across those geographies and using a combination of our own assets and an extensive set of strategic carrier partnerships, all supported by our in-house transportation management system. Great. Thanks for that background. Uh, also joining us today is BJ Johnson, CEO and co-founder of Clearflame Engine Technologies. BJ, tell us about yourself, Clearflame, uh, and the driving forces behind what led you to start the company. Thank you, Amy. Glad to be here. So I am an engineer by training. The technology we'll be talking about today was work that my co-founder, Julie, and I had done together previously at school and, and launched Clearflame to commercialize this opportunity. At Clearflame, we believe there's a reason that diesel engines continue to drive global economies. They are a very robust, powerful, and efficient platform. We're also big believers in electrification and think where electric vehicles work, that can be a great solution. However, there are many applications, including some that we're talking about today, where electrification is not a very good fit now or for the foreseeable future. In Clearflame, we developed a cost-effective way to bring sustainability to these sectors by modifying the diesel engine. So we work with professional diesel engine rebuilders to integrate our parts kit, provide it to companies like ProTrans so that they can move their goods for their customers using scaled liquid fuels that are already available in the market today, like ethanol. And with our solution, they can not only drive down their operating costs by using a fuel that is cheaper than diesel, they can actually get a lower carbon impact per mile than your average EV today because of how sustainable these liquid fuels are. So we're glad to be in the market working with companies like ProTrans, showing that there is an alternative 
to electrification that can drive faster and more cost-effective sustainability. Absolutely. All right, great. So uh, we are here to talk about sustainability in the supply chain, uh, and particularly as it relates to the transportation sector, which, according to the EPA, makes up 28% of energy consumption in the United States. Uh, so, Daryl, I'm going to start with you. As you look at approving sustainability in your industry, tell us a little bit what is ProTrans focusing on within its operations overall. I'll share three ways that we're doing this and, and some examples. So, one of the ways is we're we're just we're thinking about it, we're talking about it, and what I mean by that is our consolidation network inherently drives reduction in carbon emissions. Uh, emissions. We take modes that maybe are shipping underutilized, uh, not in the optimal way. And we use our technology, our logistics mm -hmm. experts, and we make sure that that's not only optimized to get it from point A to point B in the most efficient way, but also inherently in the most carbon friendly way as well by reducing emissions with our solution. And so just thinking about it and, and how things we are already doing might be helping to benefit it and how we could do more of that is one way. Secondly, um, we're looking also internally within our facilities, within our offices on ensuring that we're doing the basics. Do we have you know, the right lighting in place? Do we have some standards within our facilities and our offices that you know, get people thinking about it and do everything within our control uh, to drive this. And then third, we're partnering. We're, we're trying different things, uh, such as what we're going to talk about more today, but we're just doing it. We're, we're thinking about, you know, pilots. We're thinking about innovation in this area, and we're just deciding to move ahead and create business cases to find where something is a good fit and good practical applications that align with our objectives and uh, which includes sustainability. Yeah, that's great. I love the actionable focus there. And it sounds like you're really looking at uh, near term, mid term and long term solutions as well, which is, I think, how you have to look at sustainability today. Uh, I'm going to kick this over to Eric then. When it comes specifically to ProTrans's uh, efforts in decarbonizing transportation, what trends are your teams focusing on? The focus at ProTrans is how can we improve emissions related to our ground transportation services? Um, the bulk of what we do is going to be on trucks. We do offer some intermodal services as well. And so, you know, right off the bat, um, the immediate kind of question is, is, is a, is a customer's needs um, fulfilled by truckload only? Could it potentially be fulfilled by intermodal? Um, you know, there are some cases where uh, a customer is willing to trade truckload transit time for intermodal transit time um, to meet their own ESG goals. And so, you know, intermodal is, ten, you know, typically three to four times more efficient than truckload when it comes to fuel efficiency. So, you know, immediately that's kind of the, the first place that we can go to, to try and address um, a customer's desire to lower their carbon footprint or their emissions related to their transportation. But then secondly, we're also looking at what's coming out of the EPA and other government um, agencies when it comes to their policies and their regulations. We're focused on what are they trying to accomplish with those policies and those regulations. Um, and right now, especially when it comes to the 2027 you know, clean truck program that's that's coming out of the EPA, they're heavily focused on reducing greenhouse gas emissions and pollutants at the tailpipe of a traditional fossil fuel vehicle, a class eight truck that's running diesel fuel. And so over the last 15 years, there's been a lot of technology that's come out to try to mitigate greenhouse gas emissions um, or specifically pollutants that are coming out of uh, diesel trucks. And that leads you to looking for alternatives to diesel. Um, and, you know, obviously electrification is a, uh, a big thing in the industry right now. And every major OEM truck manufacturer is looking at electrification. Um, but then there's also hydrogen fuel cell technology. Um, and a lot of these are, there's a lot of excitement around them, but they come with their own set of um, infrastructure uh, limitations currently. Okay. And, um, you know, when you, when you run into that, 
you look at, okay, well, what are my alternatives for combustion engines, right? You know, fuels that we can, that we can put into trucks that we already have or other engine platforms that are existing that might burn cleaner. And so you can look at compressed natural gas or liquefied natural gas. Um, but we also found Clearflame with their E98 solution and that reduced tailpipe uh, greenhouse gas emissions, as well as the pollutants that, that come from the combustion of diesel fuel. And so we were excited to partner with Clearflame on some of our ESG initiatives with our customers. And uh, I'm sure BJ will talk a little bit more about that. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Daryl, do you want to start and touch a little bit on how ProTrans came to partner with Clearflame on the project? Sure. I, I mean, as I mentioned, we're actively trying to seek ways that we can partner and, uh, and even get challenges from our customers to uh, to push us a bit. And in this case, we were very fortunate. One of our strategic partners uh, was interested in finding a way to do a pilot that would be something aligned with driving a sustainability initiative. And we were able to find clear flame and uh, it, it really has turned into a, a great success story of something that is a shared objective between our customer and ProTrans and connecting that to a broader mission that we all have in reducing uh, greenhouse gas emissions and doing it uh, within the logistics industry and what we do every day. And so it's it's really an amazing you know, partnership and, and innovation at its best. Absolutely. And from what I understand, Clearflame offers a pretty quick pathway uh, from traditional diesel fuel through your technology. Uh, BJ, explain a little to us about the technology and you know why this offers a quicker solution in some ways. Yeah, you know, there are a lot of fleets out there like ProTrans, you know, certainly leading the way on trying to find ways to find sustainable solutions. Mm -hmm. I think ProTrans is pretty unique in the fact that they're actually looking at a really broad range of ways to, to drive sustainability benefits to their customers. Um, but I think Daryl said it right. If you want to have immediate impact, you have to do it within the way logistics is done today. Um, in the startup ecosystem, there's a lot of talk about disruption, disrupting markets. Um, you know, logistics is a single digit margin sector where you cannot afford to have product getting to your customers late. So it's a sector that really can't be disrupted. It's right to be transformed. People like ProTrans are, are transforming their greenhouse gas custom, uh, profile for their customers by using technologies like Clearflame. And that's what we focused on. Our truck, from the perspective of the user, is exactly the same as a diesel truck. It drives like a diesel, pulls the same loads as a diesel, refills on a liquid like a diesel, but because we're able to modify those parts and use a cleaner fuel, they can transform their carbon profile, reducing their greenhouse gases by over 40% without disrupting the way they get business done today or really changing their economic models. We can offer price parity on a per mile basis with diesel today. And so it is that opportunity to work with companies like ProTrans advancing their sustainability goals without changing the way they do business. That's key to that rapid disruption. Absolutely. I like that idea of transformation. And I think, like you said, being able to move quickly on these initiatives without having to change the business model uh, is huge. And Eric or Daryl, maybe you can jump in a little and, and talk. There's when it comes to electrification versus a solution like this, there are other, you know, sort of hidden uh, concerns with electrification as well with the EVs. Can you talk a little bit about those? Sure. Um, when it comes to the electrification component of this, two main issues with it. Uh, one is range. You know, we, we often can't get more than 200 miles on a single charge. Um, and then the recharge time, right? Uh, the amount of time it takes for that truck to sit there and get another full charge in order to go another 200 to maybe 250 miles. And so in a long haul transportation operation like what we have at ProTrans, uh, electrification comes with uh, a, a set of issues where you either have to have additional equipment in order to continue moving that load on time, uh, or you have to build this hub of uh, uh, places where your trucks can charge, quit, you know, and and drivers can rest. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily work when we're trying to go 1,500 miles each way. Um, and so, you know, with the electrification also comes price. And and uh, BJ mentioned price parity with a with a diesel um, <clears throat> truck with the Clearflame solution. 
uh, EVs are significantly more expensive than your traditional class eight tractor right now. So on top of some of the operational uh, barriers that we just have right now, because the infrastructure isn't there, um, price definitely plays a factor too. Absolutely. And I imagine that price uh, is another factor in scalability as well. Uh, I don't know, PJ, could you touch a little bit on uh, how Clearflame is sort of poised to help companies uh, scale in, in these kinds of efforts? Absolutely. You know, Julie and I started Clearflame to do something about carbon emissions, but the reality of the world we live in, for, for many good reasons, is that you can't actually have scalable environmental impact if it's not also aligned with better economic outcomes. So we don't want to rely on the market saying, you know, how much of a green premium are you going to pay? Um, some people can afford that and that's great, but many people can't. And so if we really want to accelerate decarbonization, we have to say, you don't have to choose between making money for your business and driving down your carbon emissions. We can do both. And in fact, you can drive down your carbon emissions faster by using more of a cheaper and cleaner fuel. It's aligning those two outcomes that's making it easier in a very you know thin margin sector to adopt green solutions like Clearflame. Absolutely, that's great. Let's go a little bit more into detail on the recent pilot program uh, that, that you developed for the tier one supplier and what those results were. Uh, Daryl, can you walk us through that? Sure, I'll, I'll give maybe a bit of a high level overview and, and we'd love for BJ to talk about kind of the intricacies of the specifics and the equipment and how it delivered the results. But we looked at uh, roughly a 450 mile route that had daily round trips as a good pilot test area to implement. And one of the things we were also looking at is, you know, ensuring, you know, while it's very similar to a diesel truck and, and, and BJ will talk about that, safety is always the number one priority. And so our drivers uh, felt like it was safe, which is a big check, number one. And then the quality, you know, is it reliable? Uh, did it meet the transit time needs? When we're late, that has implications and we don't like to be late and we do everything we can to ensure that the quality was there. And then from a cost perspective, um, it's essentially similar pricing as diesel, probably a, a, maybe a slightly more favorable, just depending upon kind of the pricing of the fuel. But um, ultimately, it had a great combination of safe, quality, cost effective, and delivered a little over 40% of um, greenhouse gas emissions reduction. So we really see it as a success. Absolutely. Uh, BJ, from, from your end, is there anything you want to add on that side? Yeah, thank you for the kind words, Daryl. I'm, I'm certainly very proud of the fact that your drivers feel safe. You know, this is something that we want the entire ecosystem that has to interact with Clearflame to love working with our products. So I'm, I'm very glad to hear that. I'm also very proud of our, our reliability and uptime targets. I'm grateful for the ProTrans team to putting this in a really hard use case. You know, This is something that we say to any potential partner out there. We don't want you to baby this truck. We want you to use it like you would a diesel truck so we can prove that it can do what a diesel truck does. They were also very good in, in thinking critically about, okay, what routes can we start on? While ethanol is nationally distributed, for early partners, we still have to drop fuel tanks at a specific location. So ProTrans helped us figure out what location could we put a fuel tank, you know, what kind of out and back routes could we do from there. But they're also helping us think through the next step. How do we scale from here? What routes can we add by adding more tanks and in other locations around the country? And that's something that's really important for, for us and partners and two things that I think ProTrans does very well they're going out there to their customers and trying to educate them about the Clearflame opportunity so that more people can adopt our solutions and solutions like us. But they're also putting in the critical thought to how we would scale this. You know, they don't just want to start with two trucks to say they're doing two trucks. They want to start there so they can grow it and have more and more of an impact for the environment and for their customers. And I'm, and I'm very grateful for all the hard work they put in on that. Yeah, absolutely. I love how you took the innovation of the technology together with the collaboration of the partnership and then to get the driver buy-in too. I feel like pretty much can't ask for more than that out of a pilot. So that's, that's really fantastic. Uh, overall, how would you say, uh, Daryl and Eric, that this experience impacted ProTrans's sustainability efforts moving forward? I think I would summarize that, you know, we 
as I mentioned, what's important to us is to try different things. And the benefit of that is the follow through on the business case. Where is there really practical application? What are the things that would enable it to be advanced faster? What are the things that are hindering it? So then as we look at our business and really our customer's business, which is our mission to help them achieve their sustainability objectives that we share, we can start to develop, okay, you know, this technology, when we see these parameters and this criteria, we know that this is in the option space. This other technology, uh, as far as reducing and, and decarbonizing, we know that it has this application at this moment, but if infrastructure goes to here, then maybe we can advance it beyond that. So I think it's a bit of just trying different things and understanding where you know the practical use cases are. For us, operationally, outside of what Daryl mentioned from a, a, a broader perspective for the organization, when it comes down to the the operations, the, the people that are going to tactically execute this on the ground, um, it, it this this opportunity demonstrated that it didn't have to be a headache. The traditional paradigms and narratives that come with, um, you know, the the move to greener, cleaner energy um, when it comes to transportation, um, there's something out there already that you know, the drivers themselves don't have to particularly give up any performance of the truck. They don't have to overcome the performance of a truck when they have everything else going on the road. And so, um, you know, for, for me, that was the exciting part about the result was how much the drivers loved the trucks, performed exactly like a diesel truck. In fact, they said it <laughs> performed better in, in, some, in some areas. And so <clears throat> that's important when we go to these next steps of moving towards, uh, you know, alternative fuels or alternative technologies for transportation is that that operational barrier isn't necessarily there, that that's not something else we have to overcome. And uh, that's going to be an easier sell for our folks. And uh, it's something that, that truly I, I was, that was, that was, that was what made me most happy about the result of this pilot. Okay, great. Uh, before we wrap up, BJ, I'm just going to ask you, uh, are there any other details about Clear Flames technology specifically in this pilot that you uh, want to share with us? Of course. We, we did this demonstration on an international LT625 truck that has a Cummins X15 engine that we modified with our aftermarket partners. Um, we are providing these as effectively trucks as a service to a customer. So we're leasing on a per mile basis with the truck, the maintenance and the fuel, if you need it, all, all included together. Um, and one of the really critical things that we can deliver to our customers, we have very, very accurate data on how much fuel this truck is using and the carbon intensity of that fuel. So on this particular pilot, I can say with a great degree of certainty that we eliminated three tons of carbon from this route on just one truck in one week. And that level of data accuracy is something that ProTrans can bring to their customers, other fleets can bring to their customers so that people with big sustainability promises can also back up those promises with real data that show the progress they're making. Uh, really great data, really interesting pilot. And I thank you all for joining us today to share it with our audience. I think uh, it's a really cool, actionable idea on a very important trend that uh, everyone is talking and thinking about. So again, thank you uh, for joining us and uh, thanks for sharing your story. Thanks, Amy. Okay. Thanks, BJ. Thanks, Eric. Thank you, Amy. Thank you for watching this Inbound Logistics video podcast. For more episodes, go to www.inboundlogistics.com slash podcast.